As we talked about earlier, U.S. consumer inflation remained, well, under wraps in January thanks to a drop in gas prices and food prices. The Labor Department reported that the CPI index was basically flat for the second month in a row. For more on this number on inflation, Matthew Wu, portfolio manager from Guggenheim Investments, joins us here live in the studio. Um, welcome, Matthew. Let me, let's talk, start with the CPI numbers. It was flat. Does it matter? Well, uh, thanks for having me here, Phil. I think uh, the number certainly is benign. <clears throat> that, that means that it leaves a lot of room for the Federal Reserve or for the government to spend money to print money. Uh, for, so therefore, for this, this perspective, it's, it's a good sign. But on the other hand, you think about it, you know, the central bank has been printing money like crazy, but still the uh, inflation, just this number, is, is just means the economy is weak. Well, the opposite of inflation is deflation. Yeah. Deflation means company can't, companies cannot raise prices, so that's not necessarily a good thing for corporate right. profits as well. Let's talk about some of the specifics. Energy prices fell 1.7 percent. These right. are year-on-year -year numbers. Right. So that means that overall energy costs dropped roughly 2 percent from last year to this year. Right. Is that significant? Well, um, given the volatility, it's not that. That it's not. It's that, not that yeah. important either. It's, you can say it's random, or you know. So, uh, and uh, when people talk about uh, the effect of uh, energy price changes on the consumption, on the economy, well, my argument I is, well, it is important, but it, it's important only when the number goes to extremes in certain directions. So I want to ask, you, you, you mentioned earlier about the fact that having some inflation is generally good. We really aren't seeing that in the economy. There right. really isn't much inflation, right. at least officially. Right. We can argue about whether right. or not the official right. numbers right. are correct. But what does that tell you about the strength of pricing power for companies then? Well, uh, certainly we are, the general background is we are uh, in a deleveraging period. And that means the, the company is not having too much pricing power. And uh, the, everybody, including individual consumers, uh, individual companies, government, lo regardless of the local, state, or federal, they all need to reduce their balance sheet. This is you know, what we have seen in Japan in the past 20 years. Now, that does mean there is risk for the companies. Now, in fairness, although the month-on-month -month numbers were flat for inflation, the year-on-year right. -year numbers, that way if we compare last month to the year before, was up 1.6%. Right. So we do have a little inflation. Right. I mean, is that good news? Well, that's certainly it. mildly good news, yes. That means uh, at least... Uh, the Fed's happy. <laughs> they want it at 2% or less, right? Well, actually, the, the even more happier for them is uh, the, their target is uh, they are not going to change the policy until they change their own views. God knows what their views is. Uh, they don't what, what's a number? I mean, if I'm watching from home, right. most people generally don't care that much about the CPI number except economists. Right. But... Is there a number that it has to hit to, whether it's 2% or 3% or 4%, that warning signs go off and we realize that there's an issue? What's that number? Well, usually, well, certainly that has some uh, psychological effect, you know, and there's no scientific rule that says 2% 2, 2 is the level, but 1.98% is not the right level, right? So certainly you have to, uh, you have to test you know, what the psychological level people can accept. So in some uh, environment, 2% probably is already too high. But in some certain environment, let's say like China 10 years ago, the 5%, everybody w was happy. So it really depends. So um, I, I guess today, given that the general background for the Western world is uh, def deflation risk or deleveraging uh, regime, people do want to see certain level of uh, to, you know, inflation. That's why the central banks in the Western society have been relatively more accommodative about uh, you know, right. mild inflation. Bottom line, a little inflation is good, yeah. too much inflation is yes, bad, and no inflation is bad. Matthew Wu, Guggenheim Investments, thank you very much for thank coming you. on the show.